thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to thank you for the organizing this important meeting and also to thank the briefer for the valuable information they provided. Mr. Chair, we share the concern about the danger that the non-proliferation regime is facing and the grave challenges resulting from the unprecedented manipulation by the governments of mem some member states, especially the United States. We, are, we were all witnesses to these countries' systematic violations of the principles and control of that regime, including by supplying Israelis occupation with all types of weapons of mass destruction, and at the same time targeting other countries and launching acts of aggressions and military invasions against them under the pretext of processing or using those weapons. These countries have continued their irresponsible behavior in Syria by repeating the same scenario, covering up the terrorist organization's use of chemical weapons by accusing and defaming the Syrian government and fabricating excuse to keep the so-called Syrian chemical file open by questioning Syria's cooperation with the OPCW and deliberate disregard of successes achieved so far. In this regard, I would like to emphasize the following point. Syria was among the first to call for making the Middle East a zone free of weapons of mass destruction, and it has always affirmed its condemnations of the use of chemical weapons by anyone at any time and place and under any circumstances. Syria reiterates that it has not used chemical weapons and it no longer possesses any of them and considers that the use of such weapons to be inconsistent with its moral and legal obligations. Syria voluntarily joined the OPCW and committed itself to cooperate with its technical secretariat to close the file permanently, despite the challenges posed by confronting terrorist acts of aggressions, unilateral coercive measures, and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. Syria was a victim of terrorist organizations' repeated use of chemical weapons, starting with Khan al-Assal incidents in 2013 and other subsequent incidents, and a victim of wrongful, unprofessional practices committed by OPCW and its teams, and again, victim of politicizations and, pe and pressures exerted by Western countries on the OPCW decision-making bodies through the manipulations of the provisions of the CWC. Mr. Chair, Syria and Russia and other countries have expressed their concerns about many technical aspects they have been raised today in relation to the wrong methods of work followed by OPCW teams and violations that occurred during their investigations, including by relying on open sources and not visiting the locations of the alleged incidents, not collecting samples and maintaining their chain of custody, and many others. Unfortunately, OPCW has neglected all these concerns, including those expressed by many experts, such as Inspector Jan Henderson, as well as ignoring the statements issued by Courage Foundation, Berlin 21 Group, and Gray Zone websites on behalf of a group of prominent scientists and personalities, led by Jose Bustani, the first Director General of the OPCW. What is reprehensible is that some within OPCW target and discredit these experts and inspectors who express dissenting views and raise concerns that deserve attention. The fact that you, United States, France, and United Kingdom exerted pressures to establish the so-called investigation and identifications team illegally, cover up its 
unprofessional practices and wrong methods of work, and then rely on its misleading report to present a draft decision to the conference of states parties to the OPCW are all clear evidence proving that these countries are seeking to target Syria by rendering the so-called IIT into a platform to pass uh, their aggressive policies. The issuance of a second preposterous report by this team at this exact timing, just uh, days before conference of states party, is a sufficient proof of those countries' control over the work of the OPCW and its senior management. Such a report is also clear proof of instrumentalizing OPCW to serve the agendas of those countries in mobilizing the largest number of member states to support the draft decision submitted to the aforementioned conference in order to target Syria, trench its reputation, and distort its image. This Conduct undermines the technical nature of the work of the OPCW and has a serious repercussions on the future of the cooperation with it. The French Western draft decision sets a new and dangerous precedent in the work of the OPCW and is another violation of the provisions of the CWC, specifically Article 8 and 12 of the Convention. This draft decision promotes false conclusions that aims to create a new pretext for committing more, committing more aggressive acts against Syria and encourages terrorist organizations to fabricate more stage incidents in order to accuse Syrian Arab army and its allies of using chemical weapons. Mr. Chair, Syria categorically rejects all false allegations against it and calls on all responsible states in the international community to expose the, those fabricated allegations and not to be drawn into this Western endeavor. Syria considers that voting against this draft decision will not only be in favor of Syria, but also in the interest of all states parties defending the principles of the Convention and other international norms. In conclusion, Mr. Chair, upholding the non-proliferation regime and protecting developing countries from pressures require, first, maintaining the technical nature of the OPCW and its commitments to the professional criteria contained in the Convention and ensuring uh, impartiality and credibility in its work, Second, obtaining, an accurate, uh, obtaining accurate and decisive conclusions far from odds and probability and ensuring their com conformity with the legal and professional criteria stipulated in the CWC because revealing any prohibited use of chemical weapons requires the strongest possible guarantees regarding credibility. Third, the solution to the current dilemma in the OPCW does not lie in ignoring the legitimate concern of states parties and scientists, including those who worked in the OPCW, but rather in listening attentively and making a sincere effort to, re to address these concerns. Fourthly, confronting all practices aimed at politicizing any mechanism with an international character and turning it into a platform to target specific countries under false pretenses. Fifth, adopting serious constructive, uh, adopting serious constructive dialogue and pursuing multilateral diplomacy to address any differences and refrain from the threat of uh, or use of forces against member states. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I